Hi, my name is Thomas Schatzel. I'm a member of the Oracle Garbage Collection team. In my day-to-day -day work, I work on the Open GDK garbage collectors, in particular on the G1 collector. Today, in this presentation, I would like to give you an overview of the changes from GDK 8 to 18 in garbage collection. One reason for comparing that far back is that we noticed that many people are still working on GDK 8. So we think this is most relevant for you. So before starting, since this presentation contains information about product di direction and future improvements, it should not be used for any business decisions, as any prediction is as usual very unreliable. Basically, do not use whatever I tell you today for your business. Now, let's get to the agenda. So what is this presentation about? First, I would like to give you a short overview about what garbage collection is, what metrics there are, and what garbage co collection algorithms there are in the OpenGDK to compare them. This is followed by a short introduction into the G1 collector, which I'm going to mostly use to demonstrate the improvements from GDK 8 to 18. This section is followed by the meat of the presentation, pointing out progress from GDK 8 to 18 and talking a little bit about the changes that led to the improvements that I'm going to show. Finally, this presentation will give you some outlook on what we intend to work on the future, what you can expect, concluding this session. Let's start with the first item. What is garbage collection and particularly garbage collection in OpenGDK? Garbage collection manages Java application memory from allocation to reclamation to eventual reuse. At first glance, what are the desirable characteristics of an algorithm here? First, memory should be provided quickly to the application. Unused memory should be efficiently detected and the detection fast. That unused memory is also commonly called garbage, hence the name garbage collection. The garbage collector should also be able to provide that memory again to the application in time. Since there are so many options and requirements to implement that functionality, there is no silver bullet here. And so OpenGDK provides many garbage collector to choose from for your needs. So what are the focuses and trade-off dimensions that I'm going to use in this presentation. These are throughput, latency, and footprint. Throughput indicates how much work is done in a given time unit. In terms of garbage collection choice, how much does the garbage collector decrease throughput to do memory management? Second, latency is about how long a part of the work is delayed from start to finish by the garbage collector. This asks the question, does garbage collector operation induce any unacceptable pauses in such transaction? Footprint of a garbage collector means how much extra memory it needs in addition to your application. After all, any of that extra memory can potentially be used in your application. Having said that, let's look at and categorize OpenJDK's collectors a bit. This table shows the garbage collectors in OpenJDK with the name, the focus area, and some of the concepts they use to achieve this goal. First, there is par Parallel GC, the default collector in JDK 8. It focuses on getting work done as fast as possible with minimal regards to latency. Memory is freed by compacting the in-use memory in application stop the world pauses. This means Parallel GC stops the application, performs its work with as many CPU resources as available 
and then continues to let the application run. It is also a generation collector to maximize efficiency. More about that in a bit. Second, there's the G1 collector, the default collector since JDK9. It tries to balance throughput and latency. First, on the one hand, doing stop the world pauses and using a generation scheme like parallel GC. And on the other hand, doing lengthy operations concurrent. That means in parallel to the application. This decreases pause times. Thirdly, there are the two new latency focused collectors, CGC and Shenandoah. They were introduced in GDK 15 and GDK 12, respectively. They try to do everything concurrent to the application with extremely small pauses. Finally, there is CLGC, which focuses on footprint and startup. It's like a slower, single threaded, simpler version of parallel GC. It is typically used for special applications where these properties matter. Since in the remaining presentation, I will be looking mostly on G1, hence some short introduction. So what is G1? G1 has been, support, has been supported in OpenGDK since 7U4. It is a default collector since GDK9 due to its versatility. At this point, it's very stable and mature. As such, we at Oracle very actively maintain and improve it every GDK release, finding new opportunities for optimization and improving it every release, as you will see. What are G1's design principles? In contrast to other more specialized collectors, it by default tries to balance between throughput and latency. It is also a generational collector to maximize efficiency. In this scheme, the Java heap is split into a dynamically sized young and old generation. Objects are allocated first in the young generation. The trick with a generational collector is that most objects die young. If you concentrate your work collecting these young objects and you keep the young generation small and frequently collecting the garbage only the young collection, you will reclaim most garbage with the least amount of effort. Eventually, objects will be moved to the old generation where they are left to die slowly. To decrease pause times for collecting garbage in the old generation, G1 collects it step by step, also called incrementally. Further, G1 tries to do any lengthy work concurrent to the application, making pauses short and fairly predictable. Examples for such heavy work moved out of the pauses are liveness analysis of the entire Java heap, and garbage collector data structure maintenance. With G1, there is one very important thing to rem remember. The main tuning knob is the pause time goal. You specify where the max GC pause mill is options. G1 will try to keep that pause time for you. Make sure to consider tweaking this. If the pauses are too long, as by default, this time span is 200 milliseconds. After all that introduction, let's get to the main part of this presentation. What happened in the last 10 releases? First, I'm going to talk about throughput improvements. The graph shown here shows relative throughput versus GDK 8 on the left for GDK 11 and 18. The scores graphed here are from SpecGV 2015, runs on 16 gigabyte Java heap with practically no other options set. SpecGV 2015 simulates a complex data warehouse system. The graphed MaxGeops metric represents the throughput of that system. As you can see, just by moving to GDK 11, throughput increased by 5% which is modest, but with GDK 18, by just dropping in the new VM, 
you will get then 17 to 18 percent throughput increase in this application. So, what changes made this possible? Let me give you a short summary of those. The first change I listed here is that since JDK9 G1 tries to do young collections for as long as possible, as they are most efficient. G1 delays starting the old generation collection to the last point possible by anticipating when it needs to start the old generation collection, given allocation rate, current Java heap size, and other metrics. Another important change has been an increased focus on decreasing the number of garbage collection by focusing on so-called easy pickings. For example, one particular class of objects that are interesting to collect are large areas. They take up much space, are easy to reclaim typically, and often die quickly too. Consider, for example, temporary output buffers and such. Your application might, for example, allocate such a buffer to write out some XML data, send it over the network, and then dispose of it. So G1 tries to reclaim large areas, every garbage collection, and almost no cost, but with a potentially big payoff. In the time from GDK 8 to 18, garbage collection themselves were shortened significantly too by looking for optimization opportunities in the code. The same garbage collections taking less time will naturally increase the time available the application is allowed to run. I will talk about these improvements in the latency section a bit more. On very large machines that are set up in a new topology, G1 exploits this fact much better than before trying to place objects close to CPUs they are used to. There have also been many, many optimizations to not so common situations, like a full collection. This last resort, stop the world uh, action, <clears throat> has been optimized to be as fast as parallel GCs now by parallelizing it. And of course, Last but not least, many non-garbage collection related improvements have been added to the VM, also improving throughput. So before discussing latency improvements, let's see, the, see whether there were changes to other collectors as well. Of course there were. Here's the same throughput improvement graph for parallel GC I showed earlier. As you can see, while the improvements are not that pronounced in GDK 18, you can expect like 10% improvements just by dropping in new VM. But now let's get to talk about latency improvements. For these tests, I ran spec GVB 2015 again, but this time in a mode where a fixed load is generated with the same heap size and a measured pause time. The table shows average P99 pause times and total time spent in garbage collection pauses relative to JDK8. So in JDK8 with a 200 milliseconds pause time goal, average pauses are 124 milliseconds. P99 pauses are 176 milliseconds. Just moving to JDK11 decreased average pauses to 111 milliseconds average and 134 milliseconds P99. Overall, time spent in GC pauses dropped by around 16%. Then, if you use current JDK 18, still at 200 milliseconds pause time goal, average pause pauses dropped to 89 milliseconds and P99 pauses to 104 milliseconds. Time spent in GC dropped by 34%. So not only pause times themselves dropped significantly over time, but because of that, 
more CPU time is now available for the application, potentially allowing use somewhere else or increasing the load on your application. As an addition, I ran G1 with a pause time goal, max GC pause millis of 50 milliseconds. The results on the rightmost column of the table show that G1 can fairly easily keep this pause time goal at 44 milliseconds average and 56 milliseconds P99. And as you can see from the relative GC time compared to GDK8, it's using around the same total GC effort as in GDK8. Or put in another word, at 50 milliseconds pause time goal, you get the same throughput hit as in GDK8 with only one third the pause time. So again, what helps, what, what helped latency from GDK8 to 18? First, since GDK11, G1 aggressively tries to reduce the amount of metadata needed for garbage collection. Simply speaking, less data kept around means less maintenance needed. I will give more details about this later in the discussion about footprint. Parallelization has been improved when trying to find references into the area that is collected. The idea introduced in GDK14 has been to aggressively remove duplicates in the site data structures that contain this information first, then parallelize instead of brute forcing through all of the data in parallel at once. Then the actual process of looking for reference into collected areas has been optimized quite a bit too, helping as well. Lots of work has also been put into improving work balancing. When evacuating in parallel, depending on the object graph, some threads may, uh, may complete much earlier than others. And they start stealing work from others. So more clever algorithms that make stealing work from other threads cheaper and more efficient, make this process much faster, decreasing overhead. Since GDK8, many more parts of the garbage collection pause have been parallelized. This gives the opportunity to merge multiple parallel phases into a single larger one, which dramatically reduces the amount of synchronization overhead to spin up and tear down potentially lots of threads quite a lot. Further, a lot of time has been invested into spe speeding up less common cases, like what to do when during moving objects, we are out of memory. That case is also called evacuation failure and is now almost as fast as regular compaction. Before talking about footprint, let's take a look at improvements in that area for another collector too. In this case, CGC. This slide summarizes G1 improvements with varying pause times goals, basically the same values as before. In addition to that, on the rightmost column, I added the average and P99 pauses for CGC on GDK18. As noted before, CGC optimizes for latency, making all work, even relocation of objects concurrent to the application. This is reflected in the 0 0.01 millisecond pauses and 0 0.031 milliseconds P99 pause times shown in the rightmost column. While these pause times are great, of course, CGC may neglect uh, throughput because of that. But let's get to the last trade-off, footprint. So this graph shows G1, GC data structure, memory usage from GDK8 to 18 on BigRAM Tester. BigRAM Tester is some test application that implements an object cache. It updates elements in an LRU fashion and is run with a fairly heavy read update load. 
intended to stress garbage collection quite a bit. Now on a 20 gigabyte Java application heap, JDK 8 G1 needs almost six gigabyte of extra data to manage everything. That has been reduced quite a bit to around four gigabytes on JDK 11. JDK 17 tops out at around two gigabytes. And as you can see in the blue line, JDK 18 levels out at around 1.3 gigabytes. That's quite a bit of an improvement. And do not forget, this is at increased performance. Let's talk about the changes that make this possible. The main idea has been to maintain the required metadata for garbage collection stri strictly on an as needed basis. That is, recreate and maintain everything concurrently, free any unused data as quickly as possible. This means to maintain only data that is absolutely necessary and when it's necessary for the next few garbage collections. Also, there have been optimizations on making the data structure more dense and improvements on the defaults. A second principle has been to give back memory to the operating system much more aggressively and to save on pause time, do that concurrently. So what is in store for the future? One big project recently has been to remove the need for G1 to lock up garbage collection when Java objects were used in native code. Locking out garbage collection can mean huge latency spikes because threads waiting for memory need to wait until everyone uh, has given back the object used in native code. The idea is to just have G1 keep on collecting, keeping these objects in place and uh, not delaying any threat. For batch processing, that means throughput applications that are tuned to parallel GC. We know that parallel is around 10% faster than G1 at this point. We have known this issue for quite a long time, but now we think that we might get G1 fairly close in throughput to parallel GC in the future. We want to do this by decreasing the amount of code that's executed for every reference write, the so-called write barriers in the future. More issues have been found in the work stealing code during evacuation and we are looking into decreasing the overhead further to improve latency. And finally, regarding to footprint, we are looking into ideas to make G1 the most frugal parallel collector of OpenGDK, shaving off a few more hundred megabyte, for example, in that big RAM tester application shown before. So, after all this, what should be the, the key takeaways for you from this presentation? For all collectors, including but not limited to G1, they all improved hugely from GDK 8 to 18. Additionally, we have got many more exciting features in the pipeline for further future improvements. That's it for today. Thanks for your attention. If there are any questions, you can certainly contact me via email. I will be also be available in the Q&A too.